started the record label using social media, using uh, Web 2.0 type message boards. Uh, people were creating content on those message boards, um, creating discussion and debate. And it was kind of interesting to think, it kind of made that community real. You know, you talk to these people online and you interact with them, but when you actually, uh, you're selling them a physical product, and, you know, and you mail it to them and you know, it makes them real people. Mm -hmm. So the... Uh, and there are people who, you know, like since that point, will order pretty much anything that we release because you know they know they have a general idea of what they're getting um they followed us they followed our releases up to you know the present day and they figured you know i like what these guys are doing i'm gonna see what else they're gonna do in the future and i think that's pretty cool we've made some pretty good friendships that way Hit That Records, which um, released a record by the band Clock Cleaner. I didn't get the record in the mail, mm. so I sent an email and um, I said, like, I was moving too, so I gave him my new address and he said, oh, you're in College Park, I'm going to be going to school there. And uh, we met each other at a Deer Hunter show, um, like a week after that. Mm. And uh, I encouraged Sean to get involved with WMUC in College Park. Uh, and from there, we became really good friends. We found out that we had a lot of similar taste in music, and that you know we we liked a lot of the same things, and we wanted to support a lot of the same things. Um, and in January of 2009, we had our first release as the record label. We had talked about it for you know, three or four months before that, and uh, we got the rights to another uh, release by Clock Cleaner, and uh, we released it, and it sold out immediately, and then we did a couple of other releases, and those sold pretty well too, um, and ever since then, we've just been building on it and uh, continuing uh, to release records, continuing to host events, and uh, we, well, we, we might not have met if it weren't for social media websites. Well, I'm PJ Ray, I'm a graduate student at the University of Maryland, and I study the internet, particularly Web 2.0. Uh, usually we define Web 2.0 as, uh, as the, the transition from, like, centrally conceived content, like your bank's website or something, uh, you know, uh, different companies would put information out there and you would just consume it to uh, uh, websites like Facebook or MySpace, you know, things that are really familiar and popular today, YouTube, where the, pe the consumers of the content are also the people producing it. And I guess most notably uh, with the rise of, uh, uh, of spaces like, uh, or sorry, websites like MySpace or Bandcamp, right? I mean, it's, it's almost like second nature now for bands to have those kinds of sites where people can go and interact with the band and sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, per, uh, post pictures that they took at the show or videos or, or make comments on um, various things that the bands have released. And so that sort of interactivity, I think, is really becoming uh, an important part of, uh, of, of uh, bands' relationships with their fan base. I think MySpace, although as trashy and cheesy as it is, that kind of really changed the way that people find out about music. For me, like, you could look up basically any band and find a song or two by them and figure out, oh, they're playing in this town soon and they're friends with this band and they're on this label and all those people also have pages with mp3s that I can check out so you kind of go down a rabbit hole and keep finding things so MySpace I think was a really big deal <laughs> used to
to, you know, kind of have a site. You might have a mailing list. Um, but to, you know, in a way it was kind of still very detached, whereas now it's like Facebook is so immediate with like comments and responses and, uh, you know, having a cell phone where you can kind of communicate immediately. Like that whole sort of networking is uh, kind of interesting in that you feel a lot more connected to people. Like you get to actually know people a little bit, a little bit better before you actually even meet them sometimes. And that's, that's kind of, uh, it's always kind of been interesting. So a year and a half ago, I got back in touch with Sean and he mentioned what he and his friend Chris were getting up to with Fan Death Records. At that point, um, I believe they were working on the third release. Uh, I really liked what he had been doing. Um, he previously worked on a label called Hit That Records, and I helped him out with um, some website stuff there. And so, once again, I just offer, you know, if you guys need any help with a website, by all means, let me know. Because at the time, they had this ridiculous website that was, you know, less helpful than anything. But, um, so I got involved with that, and then we just began talking a lot about stuff over the upcoming months. And uh, I guess after a while, I sort of just fell into it. At one point, there was an opportunity to um, put some money in. And I was just like, sure. I believe in this project, so why not? And so now, you know, I've gone from being an unofficial part of Vanda to actually having a financial stake in it. I was just on tour with my friend's band, and we all got into a conversation about um, about music and touring and releasing stuff before the advent of MySpace. And essentially, you, you could do it. It was just all that much more difficult. If you were from, let's say, you know, Pacific Northwest. Odds are, if you were from Olympia, you could get someone from Seattle to listen to your band, someone to Portland to listen to your band. But how would you get yourself out to Chicago? I mean, there was mail orders, and there was, you know, zines, and, you know, there was a there was a network, and there was radio, but now, really, anything you want is a click away, and there's almost sort of like this understanding. I mean, MySpace is a very messy surface, let's say. Nobody uses it anymore for anything except for band stuff, but it's almost become acceptable to have a MySpace instead of an official band page. Uh On the other hand, there are also... Pardon me. Plenty of labels and bands that have chosen to not really have a web presence, and it's almost a kitsch thing. Like we're so dedicated to being independent, we're not going to have a web presence. We don't have a MySpace. You can't listen to us unless you buy our records, even though their MP3s will eventually be leaked onto peer-to-peer -to -peer networks and blogs. But I think that there will be a little more of that maybe a little backlash against the kind of all-pervasive social media. I think that, you know, maybe the band is kind of like they're not sitting there saying, you know, they might have their own reasons why they don't want to use social media or whatever, and that's fine, and that's, you know, that's cool. Maybe they don't have time, uh, or maybe they're just not into it. Um, but, you know, definitely there's still a band, and they're still probably out there playing music and appreciate people that get into their music. So, you know, if that's going to happen by one of their fans, you know, going home from a show and being like, hey, I filmed like three minutes of these guys and posted it on YouTube and then shares that on Facebook and MySpace, you know? I mean, I, mean, I think a band would probably dig that. have to figure it out on their own and they aren't saturated with, you know, like, you know, band members, you know, talking about like, oh, like, we just got Taco Bell, we're on tour and we just ate Taco Bell. Like, you know, there's, there's a fine line to walk between with social media, there's a very fine line between content and just banal dribble. Yeah. 
actually this is very like not web 2.0 the way that we have our demo policy but if somebody wants us to hear their demo if somebody just tries to get us to listen to their myspace or like an mp3 that they send in an email i tell them that we aren't even going to listen to it and i give them our p.o box address because if i'm going to spend the time like to listen to something and like take it seriously I want to like sit down and listen to it seriously and give it like a thorough listen, make sure that it's the kind of thing that, you know, would we want to release this? I think we, you know, we put out records uh, because we want the physical product. I have a, um, I actually have a close friend who runs a blog and we've had some of our releases posted on his blog, kind of to drum up a little bit of buzz about them. Um, we put the releases up, we say that it's a label, uh, like, a label authorized leak, as it is, and we put up a high quality file, and, um, you know, because I'm friends with him, he tells me how many people check it out. And in a couple of cases, you know, thousands of people have downloaded something that we've uh, put out, and it definitely helps uh, sell the physical copy. When it comes to bands and music and labels and all of that, I expect to be able to get it on MySpace or, if necessary, Facebook. And when it's not there, I feel very frustrated and I almost feel unwilling to look any further. 2001 or so was just a terrible moment for music when, when Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, and it's like all that crap where it was a bunch of people in suits getting together and deciding what hits were. And today we're seeing far fewer of those blockbuster hits and a lot more like people have a have a, a more varied taste in music. There's just lots more that people are into. Uh, uh, what's known as the long tail of, uh, of music listening ship. Listening ship, if that's the word. Uh, so I think I think that that bottom up uh, uh, capability for, for bands to distribute their music has improved music, and we're in a better position for it uh, for the internet. I want our music to reach as many people as as it can. So if it takes the internet to do that, if it takes social media, if it takes Twitter to do that, uh, then that's cool. Then we'll use that, and we'll continue to use that until whenever.